in the tradition of Mark yesterday. Um, it is a tremendous pleasure <laughs> to introduce Daniela again, Dan Dam Damjanovic, who will be giving part two in her lecture series with Dishang Shu. My best, I have a bit of allergy, so if my voice goes down, remind me and I'll start yelling again. <laughs> okay, uh, so so this was the, the where we stopped last time, and uh, today I want to start with uh, that example K A again, which I kind of didn't finish right, and we will do today. A demonstration of rigidity in the simplest possible case. This was essentially what gave the birth to the whole series back in the 90s. And then I will tell you some theorems and structures. So, <clears throat> so we are back to um, this little example, basic example 3a. I want to say this was there were questions yesterday. Um, so there is a Algebraic statement proposition. Algebraic proposition which says it is a seven irreducible, irreducible uh, matrix in SL uh, <clears throat> uh, and Z. Uh, then centralizer, uh, centralizer in SL and Z is going to be virtually. Uh, Z to a certain number, uh, virtually means up to a compa group, so this means isomorphic up to a compa group, like yesterday. <clears throat> and what happens here is that when you take the number of real eigenvalues plus the number of complex pairs minus one. So this is like a general thing. And then, so if you take an irreducible three-dimensional matrix, which is exactly the hyperbolic with three real rules, so yesterday, then you get a Z2. So, <clears throat> so yesterday I was drawing this picture. So our matrix is A and its centralizer is generated by two things like this. And I was drawing this picture yesterday, which is the picture in, in Z2, uh, but in fact in R2. So here we have a lattice, which consists of lattices everywhere, right? Which each element in the lattice is one element of our Z2 action. Okay, but then I have some significant ways of, I have a way of dividing this whole Z2 action into uh, finite many pieces. So that each piece behaves in the same way. So <clears throat> their community will have three joint invariant eigenvalues.
And then on each one, uh, your element of the matrix, aka uh, your element of the action. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that uh, the reaction is formed in this direction. So we have the reaction is formed for the element K L of the reaction is going to be this is defined yesterday. You're going to be K log lambda i plus L log mu uh, i. So mu i and lambda i eigenvalues in A and lambda i eigenvalues to B. So that's a good thing. Mu i. Yeah. Okay, so the point is that um, if you look at the functional, so these are functional defined by the theorem of this physics. If you look at the function, you can of course extend them and look at them as functional as an artist. And so you can look at the lines which are turned out to be functional. That should be here. I turn out inside So these lines are turned out are dividing the R2 into six chambers. Right, so this is L1, L2, and L3. So we turn now. So what happens to so this device into six chambers? And what happens in each one of these chambers is that if you take this chamber, you take any two elements in here. What happens is that they have the same sign on the corresponding eigenvalues. This means that all the elements in here will, for example, expand V1 and contract V2 on V2. With different things, so, but we have the same behavior. So we can encode something more in the system. We can encode uh, the behavior of all the elements in this chamber in this picture. So let me say like this. So this is. I will write down what all the elements in this chamber do on each one of these eigenvalues. So for example, if I pick an element in here, it will, for example, expand this one, contract this one, and contract this one. Positive exponent here, negative negative. When I cross the wild chamber wall, this is what's called the wild chamber wall, when I cross this line, what will happen is that one of these will change the size. If it was like L1, actually, um, I don't have in my picture, but I think. So let me keep this here. And let me call this L2. So when I cross this line, one of these will change sign. So it will be, say, if it's L2, it will be plus plus minus, so the V1, V2 is expanded and the last one is injected. Then when I cross the next line, um, this is probably then V1, when I cross the next line, this should be then V1. When I cross the next L1, when I cross the next line, this one will change and this will look the same. So I have minus plus minus. Uh, when I'm here and I cross this line, this one will stay. So yeah, this one, yeah, this one will stay. So we'll have this one will still be expanding. So L1 divides the space into two pieces. Here, uh, here. all the elements which are expanding the ones on a plus, and then here I will have. Um, What's changing here? So the three, yeah, the three will change. Minus plus, so exactly the opposite. That's because these are A and A inverse. And then the rest is minus, minus, plus, and minus, plus. So this picture in code basically divides the Z2 into six pieces in each one of these uh, connected components of the picture. You have uh, that any element which falls into here will have the same behavior. Expansion, compression, I think, uh, is in one of the direction. 
of course, with a different rule. So last time, what I was saying is that neither one of these lines contains an element of the other. Why? Because if you pick an element on this line, this corner might be zero, uh, which means that you have eigenvalue one, which means that you are reducible. So it cannot fit into any one of these lines, but because lines are irrational, you can come as close as you want to the plot. So that, let me now give you a solution. <laughs> So the ZK action is an also which is contained in an also element. And this case is much stronger than so ZK. Is totally an awesome. If all elements are an awesome. I'll have to say what all of them are. All elements. Yeah, then it is. All of them. All elements. All elements. Different than the identity. Different than you. Okay, and the first one that we do for, for an RK action is a little different. So if you have an RK action, we can also have some uh, A in RK act normally hyperbolically. So the orbit formation and RK action is totally an awesome. If there is a dense set of normally hyperbolic elements. In this sense, oh, with respect to the order of So, in the examples uh, we had yesterday, the 3B and 3C, uh, any element which is not uh, lying with these lines, which I was showing yesterday, um, is going to be normal as the body to the orbit of the 10th part. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to this example. Sorry, Daniela. Um, I'm not positive everyone knows what normally hyperbolic means. So maybe a, just a picture. You have three, uh, uh, the central space, the three stable, unstable, uh, uh, stable center and unstable, uh, exponentially contracting, exponentially expanding. Here, in principle, you don't know, but for normal hyperbolicity, you assume that this integrates to a, a, to a nice foliation. And that's the orbit so, foliation. So, generally, you can say normally hyperbolic to a foliation. It doesn't have to be orbit foliation or anything. Right? So, the condition really, the, the essential condition is that this exists. The center uh, foliation exists and that it has C1 leaf. <sighs> but in this case, we require one. That's why we call it the monoxide. Okay, so this, um, this action here has some really nice properties, really, some really strong. So if you, first of all, if you pick any element, of the action is going to be exponential motion. But it has a much stronger property that as an action is exponential motion. So let me put it here. So proposition. Mm -hmm. 
The proposition. So let me say that for this action, and then I say how it is done. So A, B is an exponential mixing. Not only every element, but a small function is an action. Which means the following. I'll take it for folder functions. So for any data folder, observable. Right. Uh, uh, you have the following basic and function. And then I'm going to write it. Actually, I'm going to use this. So for any two psi as a function, observable, uh, as a certain folder, you have a function such that the correlation uh, between psi and eta uh, is bounded exponentially So there exists a positive number, as you say, there exists somewhere the folder and there exists now. So, tau does not depend on xi and eta? Or? Thank you. Only on theta. Tau. Okay, um, so where does it come from? I'm not going to do Is there a question back there? Yeah, that's a very good question. That's exactly what I want to comment on now. So why does this fall? I'm not going to prove it for you. There are several ways to prove it. I'm not going to prove it. But the, why it happens is that to get very close to one wall, you get very far from all the others. So basically, if you look at the uh, joint exponents, you can find the minimal point. So when you project it to the circle or the line, you can find some point where you can minimize the exponent. So, Essentially, for this reason, when you can get very close, but then you get very far from all the others. That's it. And it just suffices to have very strong uh, Lyapunov exponent in one direction. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the sign of the exponent that's small. Sorry, I'm repeating questions. Strong, yeah. So this is a very general fact. It's actually proven and proven, and it can be proven by using uh, analysis for the position. You can do that. Uh, the most general statement is given by Borodnik and Fasir. And they get this exponential mixing for any uh, higher on any any VK action on uh, nil manifold and mod gamma by automorphisms. Providing no, no rank and pattern. 
has no around one. So this is a really general thing. It's also really general in the sense that it holds for actions in 3D and 3D. Uh, so, okay, so now I want to <coughs> first demonstrate how we use it to get some small mobility. And then I'll tell you more about the system. So here's the proposition. So our formula is in a way to reflect the main topic of this reflection. Um, maybe it's a beautiful property for feedback because it's inherent by something. So really, as you, as you go in any direction, you have to use the expression. Remember, this action is totally normal. This action is not totally an so that's a really good question. This action could be partial hyperbolic, and that is the main point of the long process. But it has to be every element has to be a boy. Okay. Um, okay, so let me now continue to work. I want to give you one more example, and then I'll give you a demonstration of how this applies. No, no, for 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 uh, for the this example is a result of power. And for 3B you can get it by using uh, uh paper about central gap to this about time of the And you can use the again, especially. It's not really good, <laughs> but, but we can call it. I will be you. Um, so for A, for example, so for the new, new number, we are bumping up the different classes. <laughs> so S is going to be now, um, I'm going to take A, the same A to there. So, uh, Rotation because this gives an extension, translation extension of the hyperbolic and so forth. And question is what is the centralizer of the thing? R theta is rotation on the circle. And then when you solve, that means that part, you can see that uh, the central idea here is going to be the central idea of A. And then you can rotate by anything in the fiber. So I can use the system of the fiber system over the source. Here we have by A. And here we have by translations, and then of course you can commute to them translations. So the central idea is here. You wrote R2. Are you assuming D is three or do you want, I mean, Z2? Yeah. 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 These are systems with a partial hyperbolic. It has compact center formation. And <clears throat> that when you look at the spatial needs of the center formation, you get it of one from one. Okay. 
When this map will factor down to some map that far, which will actually turn out to be a So this is since we're static uh, in this variety a lot. If you want to read, you can read Bonnet Bonetti. Then uh, Bogolet has some work on this as well. And then uh, a big uh, paper by uh, Anwar Manuel Wilkinson. So they have two papers, uh, one called mm, part one, part two, this is part two. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, go back to the a variation of this, which is also a fiber cluster of the whole system, is of course the isometric expansion. So you can take n functions from C to D to R, and you can construct an isometric expansion. And it will also be a fiber partially of the body system. So here's a little uh, proposition where I want to demonstrate the little bit. Formula is to so that it looks like the center of the thing. So suppose so let F be a suppose the centralizer of F contains another asymmetric extension which in the base has B. Where well, this is another function. Then this cannot have not to happen non trivial because then this forces F is actually uh, a part. So even though the symmetric expansion can be made. To be really wild and crazy, we make the different things like this in different times. When in the centralizer, you see another asymmetric expansion like this, it forces the initial mass to actually be affine. So you just see a translation. You're assuming B is not a power of A, and B is. Exactly. So assuming B is that. It's just it's just for a rotation expansion. Mostly a rotation expansion. Okay. Um, so I can prove this because it's good, it's very nice and then it's very simple. This is very nice to be the same thing too. Centralizer are fine because the centralizer is not fine. Yes, 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 
No, but, but you have an explanation because because you are assuming C is not trivial. Okay, what do you like the first line in the two? You will see that it's not the two, it's just everybody's name. Okay. So, all right. Or you might put them in the. You already got the next one. If these two isometric extensions can meet, So write the commutation in parentheses, you will get this, you will get this five uh, minus five composed to B. This one this must be some commutation. Uh, five times five and then equal. Write down the combination. Okay. So this is what's called the first type of equation. Okay. So. Now, let's look back in the verse of single line. If I wanted to say that phi is uh, that this isometric extension is smooth with one degree of rotation, I need to show that phi is smooth to bar. So, why is phi smooth to bar? We need to conjugate to uh, rotation extension. If phi is smooth to bounding, meaning if I can write phi as two minus a composed with a, and so this conjugate here will be just given by the mass x. Do you do you need a constant there? H minus H composed of A plus a constant? No. Because the constant gets killed. I see. I cannot do this all the time, but let's say for now that say that I got rid of it. So the question really boils down, can I understand when I can solve this equation? And in fact, from exponential listing of A, vector A, not the whole one, I can even put up a distributional stuff. So distributional, a distributional group. So you can take A, and this is what Daniel was talking about next, the equation. The distributional solution, one distributional solution is this. Or I can take this distributional solution. They're both distributions if A to the K exponential, if you have a term for A, if you Take the correlation with uh, another function, you will get the exponential decay, and then you can sum it. So they're both distributions. Okay, so down the equation. Yeah. Another thing you can notice is. Since A is hyperbolic, I can take derivatives of this thing here in any stable direction for A, and then I can sum it up. 
and actually get a nice fine number. So these distributions are actually uh, have all derivatives in the stable direction for A. Likewise, here we have all derivatives. The unstable direction for all. Do you mean, oh, it's k goes from minus infinity to minus one? Sorry, I didn't see that. So here I have derivatives in one direction. So they have derivatives in some other direction. I would like to have all the derivatives. So of course the idea is that it will be so nice if they are different. And so now we go back to the thing that comes from some distribution, the calculus system. Let's call it star. star. So double star. So the question I want to ask you is if it's true. Uh, this I will call B plus or phi, depending on A, and this I will call B minus or phi, depending on A. So, what I'm asking is is it true that these two are equal? In other words, is it true that the following distribution? Of this is a zero distribution. Is it true? So now we go back to the question of the star. We go back to the question of the star. We look at it and we pass through with the distribution B to apply B A to this equation. And you will see that here I will get zero because it's like it's the binding sign. On the left hand side I get B A of phi minus D A of phi to the reduces to the extent that D A of phi is D N of phi composed with B. So this distribution, this is the distribution because A is missing. This distribution is the abstraction to get in the smooth solution. And as you see, always, actually, it didn't give anything from A to it, just with A missing and then it's hyperbolic. Um, is actually invariant under the other guy. So then, of course, if I have this invariant, I have it for any power. Cool. And now we look at what is this thing on the right hand side. Well, it's the sum k is easy of phi of a to the k d to the l, and that's what it is. Yeah. So now, what I see here is if I look at the correlation with this with another function, and I take a limit when L goes to infinity or negative infinity, yeah. it will decay exponentially as in this property here. Then it might get zero. This goes to zero. So this forces this is from exponential mixing of A B okay, so this forces B A and phi to be zero as a distribution, and that is this conclusion.
Would it be enough to just take the inner product with the function one if we're in a compact? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so the proposition was saying that if I have a continuity, it forces them to be uh, in the same place. Um, what you are doing. Um, okay, so this is the first thing that the top of five years of this investment in IT, um, the second and it kind of gave the birth to the whole field. So this is the philosophy of the type. So what I really feel here is that the real values for cycle over the action may be are smooth to well. Smooth to well, smooth to well. So uh, what you said something before actually. Yeah, this is called, this is usually referred to in this direction, it's referred to as a fire on the street. I don't know if we first told you that. But here you use this on exponential distance action, but in fact, you don't really have to have an exponential distance action. So it works whenever you can very well understand the structure to solve an individual uh, cosmological equation, and then you can understand how to explain it. So I give you a little exercise now. So what's the meaning for exercise? Before the exercise, what at what point does the argument go wrong when B is just a power of A? Okay, now this will not be the Thank you. Okay, so the point here is that um, the higher I'm without the connection in the global. And here is an exercise. Okay, uh, two parabolic maps. Uh, one, one, zero, one, uh, x, y, plus zero alpha, and take b of x, y. To be uh, the xy plus beta zero. Assume alpha and beta are diophantine, so barely approximable numbers. I didn't speak about it, but look it up. Google. <laughs> uh, show that the cosine is pretty well. So you can say. There are no non affine small circle expansion. Do the same up to small functions. So show that for time. No, no, no non affine. Circle extensions in the centralizer. No, they commute. They commute. Uh, okay. Let's be formulated with cosine for time. Oh, extensions a of the action. So. so A and B commute. They commute with this mutation. Uh, and show that any uh, phi psi satisfying. Star moves over a b uh, are uh, actually co-bounded. Are co-bounded. 
most of them. So this is just a little bit of a language. I'm trying to write this simple, but okay. You see the same thing here, so you'll find time that's not a Yes, what? Hint is to explore, use the Fourier analysis uh, and use type and time properties in alpha and on that. Yes, so the same thing here. Sample of results. This was the beginning of this one, and then uh, the top of pattern is sample sample of local global and semi local to GDP. Result. The local factor group in the 90s, uh, local agency. Okay. Basically, in short, we show that uh, one action. In uh, 3A and 3C examples, uh, they are local regions, which means by actions that can be centralized in the community function. I want to read it, meaning that for any one the action is smoothly algebraic. So these actions are locally smoothly algebraic. So C1 smooth, you mean um, a C infinity action whose C1 distance to the original action is small. Um, okay, so this 
Um, I just want to mention that this is not really, uh, this is not um, exclusive for a non selection, or the action for a non selection, a non This is not a uh, This is not exclusive for a non so this local agency was extended. Action okay. partially hyperbolic version of 3A, partially hyperbolic version of 3C type of action. This was done by uh, me and the talk. This was done on uh, Torus. This was done by, uh, it was started, started by me and the talk, and then it was completely done by Vin Hutch uh, and Wang, Zhen Shi Wang. And a little remark here is that this was done via method, which I don't have time to speak about, but it's a term method of successive iteration. And it's a very, very uh, local thing. So you can use this method only in the local situation. This was done <coughs> by a different method, which I can label by periodic time for functional. And this is very, very tailored to accessible systems. These examples are very much not accessible. These examples are very accessible. And we have two methods for dealing with the different ways. And recently, recently, um, some matter was, was uh, applied for uh, general partially hyperbolic to find actions, very general setup, like you know, from the ACU and so on, by Zhen Shi Wang. And what she does, she kind of pushes this to the implementation method, which I'm not talking about, to, the, to its own boundary. So it's like it's really in a very, very general situation. And she does use most of the exponential machines of this. But the speed, the size of the projection is too much. So, um, but really extreme, extreme stuff. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Um, so, this is the slide that we can see. The treaty itself is partially hyperbolic. No. The treaty is an anonymous action because every element in it acts not on the hyperbolic of the correlation. Oh, but we're looking at the R2 action. Yes. If you were to take an element, no diagonal, you could take the minimum element. So the action of the central item. It's describing the it, it is a V2 or V or R2 or if you take higher dimensional density. So by partial support version, I mean you take the higher dimension than three in V2, take S or B. And then you have D minus one dimensional R R K S R D minus one epsilon, and then you can take a five of the and that's going to be partially hyperbolic because it's going to be normally hyperbolic, not to the R2 solution, to R2 hyperbolic, but it will be normally hyperbolic to much bigger solution. Okay. What? Then she, 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 then she,
This is the same one. This is actually one. This is one sample of all probability. Then I will show you two more. Okay, you have four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> And together, I mean, two papers, and also the uh, for the green tag, his name is Solo, that's a long variety of components, and Jirenwa, another one. Um, so they show that, and also, action, or, um, Generated by that FG, and also the case the say I on new manifold. Fine. Providing the linearization of the and providing the homophobic okay. to uh, something like this. To, to, um, um, no run contact service. On uh, action by automorphism. So, in translation, you can get rid of the FG there. You wrote that. So, three G is probably a three or a reasonable. And I'll say in words that. Uh, so that three C is also global reading, and I'll just say what it is. It means that any action on 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 uh, any action on say SL3 line one by one is two similar properties. The similar properties are that it's totally an option that it has it's one dimensional direction that are shaped by a very direction and convective uh test to be smoothly conjugate to our conditions to this option. So that's more than one um and and it is 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Two 
of the same as the angle ideal that we had before. Then uh, for a, yes, for a is uh, for a cross r theta. It can be like about to say, uh, small population f, assuming that f is ergodic and volume preserving. Mm -hmm. The centralizer after perturbation doesn't change if the perturbation is going for the burning. Oh, then it must be it must be fine. Do we have a attribution for that theorem? Thank you very much. Okay, so um, we have coffee until 1020. Um, and yeah, see you then. Thanks, Daniel.